Hi everyone. This time I'm going to show you how the tracking telemetry tools work. Now uh, telemetry, if you're not familiar with it, is just a fancy way of saying that we're sending data from a running program and recording it somewhere, and also viewing it in real time. This setup has three different tools. One of them is used to do tests on your tracking setup to see if things have changed, say if you had to move the base stations around, or maybe if there's a difference between day and night in your studio, or if you've covered up some reflective objects you think will help stop jitter. The other two tools actually send live real-time graphs to a program that charts them out and records them. You can record this information even while you're doing a virtual production shoot, and then go back over it later to see if there were any dropouts in your tracking that might have caused problems you missed. Now the first test is called Motion Stats. When you do this test, your trackers should all be stationary, like sitting on a table or mounted on your camera on a tripod and have it be stationary. Now this one's called Motion Stats, and you can find it uh, in the Test and Telemetry section uh, under here, Motion Stats. Now I've got the uh, Motion Stats example map loaded. It's very simple. Uh, it's already set up for three of my pucks. Now here's how you would add a, the fourth one. You just drop a Motion Stats actor into the level and drag and drop it on top of the puck that you want to get stats from. Uh, generally, you want to go in here and set the location to all zeros. And I'm going to set the number of frames to 100 so that we don't have to sit here and wait too long. I would recommend you stick it up around 1,000. That'll get you a, a better reading of what's going on. Uh, then to collect statistics, all you have to do is press play. And in a few seconds, it'll take 100 samples, and there's the results. And now those are going to disappear in a second, but you can always go over here to the output log and scroll down and see them here. And you'll see there's ones for puck one, two, three, and four. You get an average value, which is just basically the position of the puck, uh, the minimum and maximum value recorded from the puck during the, during the test. And you want these to be as close together as they possibly can be. If there's a big change here, it means probably that the puck was moving. Then uh, the, the really important uh, two lines is standard deviation. This is a measurement of how much the puck jitters. And then spread is also a measure of how much the puck jitters. This is the difference between the, the largest and the smallest value that was seen during this test. So you can see most of uh, these pucks are jittering by about uh, 0.3 of a centimeter, 0.4 of a, of, a, of a centimeter, something like that. Um, and obviously you want to try and get most of these numbers as small as you can get them. You want the smallest standard deviation and the smallest spread. Now you can see these a little better in real time when you route all your data to a graph, and that's what's coming next. Here's the demo of the single telemetry sender. This is for sending from a single tracker, or you can attach it to anything else that moves and get data on that. So to start everything up, I've already got telemetry viewer running. I just punch import. I go over to telemetry viewers folder, and then I say I want the single telemetry for one actor. Now in Unreal, you just drop single telemetry center into your map. This is a nice minimal one that goes really fast. And then you uh, drop it onto the object you want telemetry from and check your parameters down here to make sure you've got them set the way you want. And then all you have to do is hit play and it starts recording. And you can see on uh, this setup, we've got a little extra detail. Uh, we've got the XYZ roll pitchy yaw. And we've also got some histogram running. Uh, and what this does is it tells you the distribution of all your samples. So since my tracker is stationary right now, this kind of gives you an idea of what the range of the noise is. And this will get more uh, stable once it gets to a thousand samples, because that's the uh, number of samples the histogram is set up for. And you can already see, though, that uh, most of the samples are right in the center, and then it kind of falls off to either side. And these last sets of graphs are power meters. They're done with a Fourier transform. Uh, and what these would tell you is if there's any particular frequency of signal uh, in this noise that you're looking at over here. And since these are pretty much flat, you can see that there really isn't. I mean, if there was something like, say, a 10 hertz um, 
signal that was uh, really strong, you'd see a big spike right here at 10 hertz. But in this case, everything's running pretty smoothly. Now there's two other modes you can run the telemetry sending stuff in. One is tracker normalized. That means basically that it takes the first sample it receives and then subtracts every other sample from that. That makes all the graphs be more or less centered on zero. So if you wanted to, you could say overlay the roll, the pitch, and the yaw, or the x, y, and z values from a tracker all on the same graph. And they wouldn't uh, depart from each other too much. Uh, which could make the graph hard to read if you're uh, letting it auto scale. The other uh, setup is raw tracker relative, and that basically means that it's taking the tracker data and measuring the distance or the difference from the previous sample and sending that. And I've got that running right now so you can see what that looks like. So you can see here everything is, again, it's centered on zero. So if you wanted to, you could overlay some of these things all in the same graph. Um, but it makes it very easy to see that the noise here, uh, like on my x-axis, it seems to be about uh, plus or minus six hundredths of a centimeter. And on my y, it's about two hundredths of a centimeter. And on my z, it's about three hundredths of a centimeter, roughly. And you'd think that's not really very much, but that's enough jitter that you can actually see it, as you probably know by now. Uh, if you look at the histograms over here, you can see the distribution of the samples. And while most of them are pretty much centered on the zero line or very close to it, there's these outliers out here that jump all the way up. And that's what gives us the jitter, is that's where you see these peaks and spikes on the other graphs here. And of course, back over on the frequency graphs, again, they're more or less flat. So that's showing us that there's no particularly large amount of energy at any frequency. That means that there's probably no like mechanical hum coming from anywhere in your system that's seeping into the trackers. Now here's a demo of the um, multiple tracker telemetry setup. Uh, you can see I've already got telemetry viewer running and I'm gonna import the correct template for doing four trackers. Now this is just a basic setup. You can add, remove, and change these graphs however you like. Then I go into Unreal, and I take my multiple tracker telemetry object and drop it into the level, and you can see it's already set up for raw tracker output. It's going to my local computer, port 8080, and I've got it set for a maximum of four pucks, which matches the uh, template that I just loaded in Telemetry Viewer. So now all I got to do is punch the Start button, and you'll see it start up, and there you are. Now this last piece is really interesting. Uh, you'll notice up in the upper right hand corner that there's actually video there of me playing around with the trackers on the desk. And at the same time, all the tracker data is coming through on the graphs. This is really nice because you can set up this webcam in your studio when you're shooting or when you're testing. And if anything happens that causes a glitch in your tracking, for example, somebody blocks a tracker's view of the base stations by walking between them or maybe putting their hand on the tracker, you can wind back over the uh, video and the uh, tracking data all at the same time and see what it was in the studio that caused the problem. I'm going to uh, rewind back to when some things happened. You can see that when I what happens when I cover the tracker up, that's where the glitch is, and when I uncover it, it comes back. So if you're trying to make sure that there's no problems with your tracking, you can walk around the studio with this running and see if it causes any dropouts, and then check the video to see what caused them. You could also try staging a rehearsal with your talent to see if the way they move around causes any tracking dropouts. That's all for now.